Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing another movie review in leading up to a brand new movie. This is more of a retro review. Today we're talking about Maze Runner 2 Scorch Trials. Uh, the Death Cure comes out very soon so we wanted to go back and redo, uh, rewatch and review both of the first movies because obviously those came out before we started our channel so we don't have reviews for them up so we're bringing them to you today. And we already re reviewed the first film. If you guys want to go check that out, we'll link it up. And so we're going to talk about the sequel, which is not as good. Not at all. <laughs> but let's talk about why. Overall, I think this movie is just a mess um, from a lot of different areas, which we'll get into. Overall, it just seems very fast-paced and rushed in a bad way, I think is the overall best way I can describe it. Yeah, it seems like they had a lot of ideas, but ultimately decided to go with all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and see how it all works out. And it ends up feeling just not quite as good. Which, to be fair, that follows what I remember of the book. <laughs> uh, I read the first Maze Runner book, which we talked about in the first uh, review, but the second book I quit about a third of the way in because I didn't like it and it was too combobulated with too many ideas and the movie handles those ideas a little bit better than the book like you can actually follow the plot and stuff which like the second book was just confusing maybe that's just me <laughs> I don't know maybe you're like you're dumb that book was so easy to follow whatever I think the movie did it better <laughs> however it's still not a great movie so I think one of the biggest things that stands out as you're watching this movie is it has so many chase scenes all of them it has, like, triple the amount as the first one. The first film felt like it was balanced and had, like, what, two major chase scenes? Mm -hmm. But this one seems like everything. There was no action that didn't involve a chase scene, which That's was true. weird. Um, and there's a lot of action in this movie. So there's constantly running, which I guess fits with the theme, but it ended up being a little unexciting after a while. So let's talk a little bit about the characters from this movie. We still have our main people from the first one, our core cast. We do have a few extra players on the villain side and also on the main character side. And most of them are very forgettable. <laughs> this movie makes a very odd choice that instead of focusing on the people you got to know in the first film, which is like Thomas, Teresa, Minho, Minho and Newt, I think were the main mm -hmm ones, they actually don't really have any development or arcs, I feel like, this entire film. No, not really. I mean, Newt and Thomas have a little bit together, but separate, not really. Instead, they spend the time focusing on all these side characters that come in and trying to make you care about them and give them their motivations, and it, it really doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't fit well. I don't, I don't know. Like, like I said, they're forgettable. Like, you get to the end of the movie and you're like, who was who? Why did they matter? Yeah, and for example, this is a spoiler-free review, but I think mentioning character names and stuff isn't a big spoiler. But the end of the first film, you basically have four people that you care about and know their names and who is speaking dialogue. In the beginning of this film, what you don't realize is there were two people who also survived that were standing behind the main cast in the first one. And the beginning of this film decides to spend all almost all the dialogue on these characters. So, like... They just show up and start talking. They're like, yeah, that's right, Winston. We've been friends forever. And you're like, wait, what? Who is this guy? Who, is? <laughs> Who I guess was in the first movie that no one noticed. And they just spend so much time on these characters that it just it's, it feels so forgettable up by the end of it. So rolling right into the plot, like I said, I feel like they had so many ideas. And they decided to say, let's do all of them. And I think it just, this movie starts to become so generic for such a unique premise from the first movie, this movie does the opposite. And they're like, what if we just did all, like, the cliche, generic, like, apocalypse things? Another aspect that makes this movie very generic is they have a zombie-esque virus going around and infecting people. Um, and they're just... They borrow a lot of themes <laughs> from other prominent zombie films and not just even with that part of it there's a lot of pieces in this movie where i was pointing out being like oh that's borrowed from this franchise that's borrowed from this franchise like i don't even remember what, what specific ones they were but the zombie part of it was very egregious in my opinion and it just i don't know i didn't care about them <laughs> yeah it just instead of having an interesting 
maze that these kids are trapped in with cool creatures that you don't understand and this mystery and intrigue, it changes into big evil government chasing them through an apocalyptic wasteland that's sandy, chased by a bunch of zombies as well. And then you roll into this resistance storyline that feels like, at one point they go, Hunger Games has a resistance. Uh, Divergent has a resistance. I mean, we need a resistance. Thing. But I feel like there's just so many more ways you could go about it than just the generic, it's a resistance and we have to fight back against them. Considering how unique the first film was. Not only that, but overarching storyline between all of the movies, this movie felt like it didn't really matter. Um, you the, the ending matters. The last ten minutes mattered. But l the whole movie was just, l like, leading up to those ten minutes. Like, you could have made it shorter. You could have done a whole lot else than made that, like, the first 30 minutes of the movie and then had something interesting. I just, <laughs> a lot of the middle part literally doesn't matter in the long run. At least I think so. Who knows? Maybe we'll get to the third one and all those things will matter. I don't know. Yeah, so, overall in that area, it was just... A mess, and yeah, I ended up feeling like it didn't matter at all. It was very, like, I left the theater, or, like, when we watched it this time, being like, okay. <laughs> I do like the ending. I will say that out of all of it. I think the last 10 to 15 minutes are the strongest of the entire movie. Um, it definitely sets up for an interesting third part. So I'm curious to see how it does. I'm honestly surprised for the quality of this film that a third one actually got approved and made. It seems like it's been a, a long time since this last one came out. Well, there are reasons for that. Which is true, because Dylan O'Brien did get injured Very on the set, injured. and it took him like a full year to recover, and I he believe he had to have like, facial reconstructive surgery, things like that, because of an accident on the set. Yeah, and that, I think that's a little sad, because it... I do think it will affect interest. Like, I completely forgot about this series, and then they go, oh no, the death cure is here, and it's like, Plus it's oh. a January release, which is not the best <laughs> for box office death numbers. Zone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, we'll see how it does. Like I said, I'm surprised when they actually did make it through. I thought it was just gonna fade into obscurity. At and... least they didn't split it into two movies like a lot of these ones do. Oh gosh. That would have been terrible. But, so I'm interested to see how that one turns out. Overall, first movie, much stronger than the second movie. Second movie is not unwatchable, but I probably wouldn't choose to rewatch it again outside of this rewatch we did for this review, <laughs> to be honest. And now that the third one's coming out, like, there's really no other reason to rewatch it to prep for a movie. Yeah, overall, I think the first movie is rewatchable and unique, and you're better off just watching that one. But what did you guys think of The Scorch Trials? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you Were you just kind of meh like us? Let us know down in the comments below. If you enjoy this video, please leave us a like. It really helps us out. And subscribe if you like our videos. We have a lot of different content, lots of different reviews, new stuff, old stuff that we're trying to bring your way. And if you want to see some of those, you guys can click right over there. And we will see you next time.